thank you from me too. I'm Nina Wallerstein from the University of New Mexico and really looking forward actually to this session um, and the opportunity to create a vision together of our partnership. And the process we're going to use is going to be using this community-based participatory research model, which is the same as participatory research, action research, YPAR, youth participatory action research, all these names for partnering together. We just in health use the term CVPR. But the idea is to really showcase and identify the core outcomes that we're looking for, and then how to, what are the practices to get there. That's the simple what we're doing today. And I want to just give you a little background first, and just for a five, ten minutes, and then we're going to um, go into small group work. This has been a process working with partnerships around the country for the last ten years to identify what are the core elements of partnering that make a difference to improve outcomes. And the key question is how do we actually work together to improve these equity outcomes? We have been working with hundreds of partnerships around the country, which is kind of very exciting in ways to measure some of these practices and outcomes. Today, we are actually going to look at the model again as a whole. It looks, it's in front of you. It looks complicated, but in fact, it's really straightforward. It, all it says is that we're together, we have context that we're working from, we have partnering practices that we're engaged in that impacts the choice of what we do in doing research together, in evaluating together, and in creating the curriculum together, and it in, in fact then impacts the outcomes. So just to take you through a little bit step by step, the context here in this model says that there are policies, there are district policies, there are school policies and practices, there are state policies <coughs> around um, these kind of issues in ethnic studies, there's national policies. So what's the context that we're operating from? One context has to do with if you're in a high school that has a history of doing ethnic studies. Mm -hmm. The other context is if you're in a high school that's never done this before. So those are different contexts, different starting places. The issue that's in the center here, it says health issue importance for us, is it's really what's the educational outcomes that we most want to see in terms of achievement of the students, in terms of life goals, et cetera. So this is a, con a context kind of thinking. And I think to have the small groups in working together high school by high school, that's going to be helpful. The next domain is our practices as partners. And you can see that it involves us as individuals. It involves the relationships we have together. As we work together, we will make decisions share in a shared way. We will have a way that we can say this is, this is a need that we have from APS, this is a need we have from UNM, but we'll be making those decisions together. And then we have agreements. Partnership structures are really the agreements. Do we need to have agreements? And in fact, um, we're already starting that process of agreements. If we're partnering well, then that improves what we do together in terms of the intervention and the research because it brings together the knowledge and the questions from APS and from UNM together and says, how is that going to impact the pedagogy of the ethnic studies program? How does it impact the implementation? How does it impact it so that it's based on the culture and the um, needs of the school and of the students? And also, it will affect the research questions. So we're going to be getting to those research questions as we go through. We've already started getting to them. But if, if we were just, or you alone, were just doing this process, we would have very different questions than what we end up together. That's the idea of the partnership. And then it leads us to a set of outcomes. And you can see on the, the model that you might have in front of you, or this model, that there might be outcomes related to new policies, outcomes we've talked a lot about, I've heard, around empowerment of teachers to engage in the skills development of teachers in this um, arena the idea that this partnership might be sustained for a multiple periods of time, the idea that there are um, different capacities that APS research capacities have and that we can kind of have a mutual learning around those capacities. And ultimately, the long-term outcomes here, it says health, but if you think of what are the long-term outcomes for the young people. So just to step back and say, as other groups have recreated a model for themselves, it creates a journey. Where are we starting from and where do we want to go? 
And just to show some examples, this was an oral health program in Australia that recreated this whole model very differently using um, their own issues of oral health inequity, barriers to care, and kind of the outcomes that they wanted to see. This was a group working on urban youth, and so they created their context, their partnering dynamics, their intervention research design, and the outcomes they wanted to see. This is a group from uh, the Mescalero Apache Reservation who really created a very different looking model. So this version is not what we're necessarily creating. We're going to create something that works for hopefully the high schools and APS. So the starting place for us is going to be outcomes. We're going to go backwards. So if you look at these either side of this slide, this is a beautiful um, multi-level oval picture of nesting the students within the teachers and their capacities and their capa um, the development of the nest that's nested in the curriculum and the pedagogy and the products that's nested in the implementation at the school level that's nested within implementation of the practices and policies in the district and then therefore and that's nested within our overall partnership. So the question for us is what outcomes do you want to see at each level? Now we know that the students are very much long-term outcomes because in the early years the question is how much do we want to collect the student outcomes but as we envision what would be the most exciting opportunity for the kids is what are they going to get out of this, how does it change their lives, how does it impact possible things like graduation rates, like um, hope for the future, like ongoing education. There's a bunch of outcomes that people could um, create and vision. I think the focus right now of this partnership is on the intermediate level outcomes, which is really teacher changes and teacher capacity development and also then at the curriculum level, what's the pedagogy of the curriculum that's been used in the past, how does it want to grow and expand in the future what's going to happen in terms of outcomes at implementation at the school level in terms of practice is it going to be an ongoing sustainable um, you know opportunity is it just going to happen this one or two years or is this five years from now a sustained implementation at the school level in terms of leadership support in terms of school level finances and then of course that is within the district level outcomes so what we want to start with in small groups is have you start with creating a divided butcher paper here. You can divide it any way you want. You can put two pieces of butcher paper lined up together so you have outcomes, intervention, and research impact, partnering dynamics, and context. But starting with outcomes, it's, we're going to ask you to work in small groups to brainstorm the idea, the question is, five years from now, what do you want to see? At the teacher level, at the school level, at the curriculum level, at the district level, and hopefully thinking 10 years from now, maybe at the student level. So there's the intermediate outcomes, and then there's the long-term outcomes. So we have um, markers. We have butcher paper and we have dedicated people, I think, in this room to create the, this idea. And I would recommend starting with outcomes. The goal here is to create a whole logic model using the CBPR framework. You might want to put that idea of what kind of partnering you'd like to see. Um, and you can also use this um, as a template, as a cheat sheet for um, looking at the issues here. And I would suggest that the, another core area to focus on is what kind of curriculum intervention do you want to see and what type of research questions will be most important to you. And the way we'll get to that is, of course, starting with the outcomes. The pedagogical practices of ethnic studies can then in, increase or improve teacher yeah, practices. Okay. Like want students have access to that literature on ethnic studies, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so access to literature on ethnic studies, that's a big one. 
can it, it lends itself to being able to be readapted to you know STEM area major or STEM area disciplines, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we look at those students and all that tech. Like and then those kids to yeah. okay. I think the multi-level thing helped us kind of come compartmentalize a little bit where the outcomes were that we were going to identify and then work backwards. Um, and then a greater sense of community among teachers and administrators that are endeavoring and going down this endeavor. So um, also maybe potentially PLCs for, uh, for people working on curriculum, so the assistant principals um, on curriculum. Refinement of curriculum and pedagogy to meet student needs and desires. One thing that we talked about was that electives are student driven and so to make sure that we would be able to have all of the classes meeting uh, the number of students in them, we need to make sure that we were meeting their needs and desires and it maps back on to the possibility of doing an intervention around why par for students where they had an opportunity to determine the topical areas in the curriculum. As UNM continuing to make that uh, that research accessible to uh, to APS and creating kind of this back and forth relationship, also being aware of the boundaries and the different power levels that exist between both of the both of the bigger stakeholders, APS and UNM. I know there's more, but. We're kind of, we kind of put it in, in these two camps. Uh, and then eventually hoping to become non-hierarchical and equal partners in the entire process, right? Um, but I think one thing that was really important to us was like being deliberate co-owners of the data um, and the knowledge, that's, um, the knowledge that comes out of this um, in terms of uh, presentations and publications. So nobody owns the, the data or the research on their own. So. Um, in terms of like conferences, research, publication, like it's something that collectively is a decision that's made instead of a uh, researcher saying, hey, I'm going to present this at a conference or I'm going to publish on this without there being any type of consent or input from APS. So we want that to be um, everybody is, uh, is responsible for this, uh, for ownership of this data, right? It doesn't belong to one group over another. I hope this allowed in addition to getting more specific research questions and all, but to showing how integrated the n deliberate thinking, I mean you, you talked about it as kind of being very conscious of how we partner together matters for producing the shared knowledge and the outcomes for the students. So I was hoping that it seemed like people really thought that through in a lot of the discussions. So that it isn't just that we're just here without any structure. We're trying to be deliberate about working together. So I really appreciate that a lot of your energy and successful brainstorming is, is now captured enough. So then we'll try and synthesize it. So thank you.